All right, so just like with Wonder Wolf, oh, take a look at the uh, at the insert at the card insert. There's Spectra still on her card. Again, you can still see the various rubber bands and other things holding her in place. But again, a really great uh, display in packaging. You really love it. I, I really love it. The backdrop, got the city skyline with the full moon. You've got that 3D clock tower where you can really read that justice that goes bump in the night. Really read that. That comes out really well because, again, Spectre's a ghost. And uh, as I had mentioned, or I guess <laughs> from your perspective, as I will mention, as I have will be mentioning, <laughs> as I already have will be Mentioning, uh, on the back of the box, there's the picture of Spectra kind of coming through the wall with her foot still passing through. Minicom, same kind of thing. There she is kind of flying through the wall with her, with her legs still coming apart. Recreated that same moment by folding over the box and putting it through a hole. And you can see there's the ghostly disruption where her foot is passing through. No ectoplasm left behind. Spectra's a very classy kind of ghoul. Revolutionaries here to take a look at the next figure. Well, yeah, <laughs> the next figure from the Monster High Target exclusive Power Ghoul series. We're going to look at Spectra, and depending on how you pronounce the V, Wundergeist or Wondergeist. Spectra Wundergeist or Wondergeist. It's all depending on how you want to pronounce that V, guys. It's all I, I prefer Vundegeist. Spectra Vundegeist. That's how I'm going to pronounce it. If I'm wrong, I'm sorry. That's how I'm going to do it. But she is the Polter Ghoul. Polter Ghoul from the Power Girl series. Yeah, I'm not going to mix that up. <laughs> and she is the justice that goes bump in the night. Because, of course, Spectra is the daughter of a ghost. And I've got a soft, soft, uh, soft spot for Spectra. She's, she, fr from her original introductions, she's always been one of my favorites. Because, uh, because of course, uh, for anybody who watches the show, you know that Spectra is kind of the, well, she does, the, she does her blog, the, ghost, the Ghostly Gossip. So she does her blog. And for anyone who blogs or YouTubes, you're probably going to have a soft spot for Spectra because, well, that's her thing. She's always talking about, What's next on her blog? What's going to be the next big thing for her blog? So you got kind of a soft spot for her hobby. <laughs> you know, that's cool. I like that. Uh, other people, uh, they just love Spectra because she's black and purple. She's got the whole purple theme going. In this case, uh, more of kind of a violet border here. The Monster High chain kind of got the violet. Same thing down here on the bottom. Very, very Spectra color based. Uh, on the back, you got the Monster High Gore Gazette, the school paper, Poulter Ghoul Curdles, uh, and you can see through her hand the L, Curdles Plot. Curdles the Plot. Well, we'll read about what that means here in a moment, but there's the picture of Spectra, a great picture of Spectra, with her foot coming through the wall. You know, she's kind of passing through, flying through with the foot still on the wall. Here on her, in her minicom, you can see the same thing. There's her foot kind of passing through the wall. And they recreated it. If you can kind of see down here, you can kind of see where her foot's passing through the wall there. And I'll probably, I'll probably take a moment and show you what it looks like out of the pack. Because, again, you know, the Monster High Power Ghouls, this, this inside card is just really cool. I mean, this is a, this is a great packaging I, I, I didn't mind saving this. Let me say that. I didn't mind saving this because they look so cool in the pack. I'm glad to get them open. I'm glad to have them. But, uh, but they're really cool to have just if you, if you have them on your shelf, if you just collect them in pack. I mean, that, that's a great display. It really is. 
But um, again, got kind of violet coloring to kind of go with her black and purple theme. And uh, let's find out what the Curdles plot, how, she, how does she curdle the plot? Monster High, a sinister place, Monster High's water supply, a sinister plan. Let's start over. Monster High, a sinister plan to replace Monster High's water supply with milk, has been foiled by the haunting heroic Poltergool. It could have been a disaster, especially for those lactose intolerance among us, said headless, headless headmistress Bloodgood. Authorities say that sometime after midnight, they were alerted to a disturbance in the catacombs coming from the area where the school's reserves are located. Reservoir, excuse me, reservoir is located. Yeah, it was me who called him, said Operetta, a monster high student who lives in the catacombs. Or excuse me, her Operetta. It, yeah, it was me who called him. There you go, got to give him the southern twang. Got to give him that southern twang. Yeah, it was me who called him. Said Operetta, a Monster High student who lived in the catacombs. It sounded like some monster was given a whole parcel of cats a bath, and they weren't enjoying it a bit. I'm going to guess that was still Operetta. <laughs> when authorities arrived, the reservoir they found, uh, when they arrived at the reservoir, they found stacks of large bags, all labored, labeled powdered milk concentrate. Hovering above the bags was uh, Poulter Ghoul herself. She was reported as saying, I regret to inform you that I was not able to capture Cat Tastrophe and her felonious feline flunkies. Gotta be careful with that one. <laughs> but I can assure you it will be a long time before they try to sour the waters of Monster High again. And of course, that's in a very breathy voice that I'm not even going to try. <laughs> the authorities were initially skeptical that the single monster... Even one with superpowers could prevail against three likewise powered villains. When questioned on this, Poltergool, Poltergool replied, I simply pushed them into the water. Getting them wet seemed to take the fight out of them. Despite leaving a trail of soggy paw prints, the alleged perpetrators were able to evade capture. Poltergool, Poltergool herself disappeared soon after all the powdered milk was safely removed from the reservoir area. Uh, wherever... And whoever she is, said Bloodgood, the students and faculty of Monster High would like to extend their thanks to Poltergool for spoiling the for spoiling catastrophes milky mischief. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, it's an adventure. It's an adventure, and you know, we we this is the second time that catastrophe has struck. So catastrophe strikes again, foiled by Poltergool. That's cool. And it, boo, could this be? Well, we already know who this is. This is Claudine Wolf as Wonder Wolf. It appears another super-powered monster is lurking about Monster High. Where did she come from? What's her role? Will she play in Fighting Chaos? Is she friend or foe? Is she wondering? Okay, this is the same thing said about Spectra. <laughs> same thing. But there it is. There's a Claudine. We've already taken a look at her. There's the picture of Spectra. There she is in the pack. Let's get Poltergool out of her box and have some fun. Be right back. All right, we've got spec. Well, <laughs> Poltergool out of her pack, and uh, and yeah, uh, Spectra. Spectra is one of my favorite characters from the show. I I really love episodes that have a lot of Spectra in them. She's just a really great character. She moves through walls. She's a bit of an eavesdropper. She's so breathy. <laughs> she's she's actually a really really cool character. I like Spectra. Um, her figure. I've never been a big fit fan of any of the figures for Spectra. And on Poltergool, I think I know why. And I'll I'll talk about it here in a minute. But first, and always good things. Um, well, <laughs> to, before I get into uh, before I get into uh, Power Ghoul or Poltergool. I want to talk about her mini com. It's the only accessory she has. There's no shield, no extra weapons or anything like that. Just the mini com. Issue. Come on now, focus. Poltergool issue number one. There it is. And there she is, moving through the, uh, moving through the wall with her chains flail, the ball and chain coming off her belt. That's very cool. Well, it's another origin story. It's another story of, uh, of uh, Poltergool's origin, starting with Spectra, just as she normally is. 
And Spectral can fly. She's a ghost, so she can already fly, which is kind of a big boon to her, uh, to her superpowers. But uh, <laughs> basically, uh, uh, her origin was that uh, well, apparently she was reading something, someone snuck in, snatched something, and uh, that was bad. <laughs> so, so that's kind of the, the event in the Spectra story until she actually got her powers to become the pol Polterghoul. And that's a fine piece of artwork right there. That's a great little panel. Uh, Spectra's powers, or Poltergool's powers, are like telekinetics. Again, she can, always, she can already fly, but her powers are that she can move things with her mind, uh, like sending her chains, the chains on her arm, the, uh, the steel ball that's on her belt. You know, just kind of send that flying out and grabbing a hold of people and things and stuff like that. So kind of a nifty, uh, kind of a nifty idea. Kind of a nifty power for, for a ghost to already have. Considering, you know, ghosts already kind of move things and haunt things and her hair is kind of tucked underneath her arm here. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, that, that's Spectra's power. And I, I got to say that I think they did a really cool job creating the, the chains and doing the, uh, the part that goes around her arms that they have in the comic. They did a really great job. It starts here on her collar, on that choker she has. And then, actually, let me take her off her base. <laughs> she does come with a base. She is one of the more, you know, larger pack boxes. So she comes with a base, which is good because, you know, these Monster High figures do not stand well on their own. But starts with her choker. And then it feeds down her back and then splits into three on this side, three on the other, and then all these smaller chains, about what, six of them? Yeah, <laughs> there are about six of the, 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 the other chains hanging down with the rings on them. And it's kind of cool the way they have it because, you know, when it's at her side, you know, it just kind of hangs, it dangles there, which means that she can actually bend her arm pretty much at 90 degrees and it doesn't pull on it, it doesn't tug the other side. You know, her other arm can move pretty much on its own, and it doesn't limit the articulation from one to the other. That's actually really cool. I like that. And I like how it has almost like a cape-like quality the way it hangs down. I would have liked the, the, the chains to have been a little... I would have liked them if they would actually been real chains, if they had just taken like little metal chains, painted them the same kind of lavender pink color, and it just made them longer. Same thing with the belt. You know, her chain, her her belt is just a chain wrapped around several times with a with that metal ball on the end. If that had been a real metal belt with her cape, just real chains, it would have been a bit unruly. It might have got kind of dangled at times. You know, got to have to untwist it. But pose wise and and aesthetic wise. It probably would have just been a much better, much cooler looking kind of effect to have real chains on there. That that would have been cool. But uh, but yeah, that's actually really good. I do like that. They've kind of kept the same chain theme in her uh, in her uh, he headband, her earrings. Not so much. They're chains, but they've kind of got a starburst with a skull inside it. Same kind of skull she's got on her chest. So if you remember from Wonder Wolf, there was the skull with the ears and the two fangs. Here, Spectre just has a regular skull, but it's the same kind of monster high style. So, yeah, they're on. They're, they're, you can tell they're going to be on the same team. They're part of the same. They're on the same side basically. But her dress got the fabric dress with the black and again lavender kind of pink color. Her boots. Mostly the silverish kind of a gray color, but again, you can see that chain theme, that lavender pink chain running all the way along the top of the boots, all the way to the trim. Very, very cool. Uh, now, I was going to say on Spectra, one thing about at least this particular Spectra is that if you look at her Minicom, if you look at the Minicom version, her face in the Minicom is much more, much longer, a little bit more pointed. 
Here she's got a very round head. You know, it's not as long as I think it should be. The chin isn't quite as pointed down. I think that uh, that if they used a Venus head, a, a, a Venus McFly trap, if you even know who Venus is, they would have used a Venus mold of a head for Spectra, I think it would actually turned out much better. I think that shaped head would have been more accurate, at least with that, that look on Spectra, which I think is probably pretty close to how she normally does look. Her face is usually much longer, not nearly as round. But uh, she does have the, uh, the kind of dark patty lips, got the two-tone eyes, kind of the black, uh, black in the eye. She's got kind of that lavender eye makeup, that, that kind of mask of makeup across her eyes, which is kind of a nifty idea. I do like that. You know, they didn't have to sculpt anything or add any kind of accessory. They just painted it across. And it gives you that same effect, you know, that she's wearing kind of a mask on there. It's actually pretty cool. Uh, she is chalk white. <laughs> and I get it. I mean, she's a ghost. You know, her she's going to be kind of a, a Casper kind of chalk white kind of color. But um, but they did go ahead and for to, to kind of give her more of that ghosty effect, about halfway down on the forearm, you can see where it fades from the white into the clear translucent plastic on her hands. That is very cool. Uh, her... Uh, her legs, same thing. Her legs, these boots. Now that the boots come up so high that you can't see it, I'm going to see if I can take the boot off and let you see. There it goes. Same kind of thing. Her lower leg is the same kind of, uh, kind of just chalk white. But as you move down, it starts to fade, 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 fade until you get to the clear foot. That is very cool. I like the fact that they did it both on the hands and the feet and the fact that, again, these are fashion dolls. They are. I call them figures, but they are fashion dolls. So they're meant so that you could change the costumes, change out stuff. So if you wanted to, if you really love that Spectra head and you wanted to go ahead and change the costume, I don't know why you would, but if you did, yeah, you can swap out even the boots and it still has the same Spectra style. Still has that translucent foot, despite being with really, really high boots. Uh, let me take just a moment. Okay, just kind of reset the camera. <laughs> uh, Spectra's articulation, just like with Wonder Wolf, she's got the ball jointed head. The arms do come up, oops, and out. Twist at the shoulder, twist to the elbow. Bend at the elbow, twist on the hand, hinge on the hand. So full, nice articulation, typical articulation that we see from Mattel on the arms and the shoulders. Nothing in the waist. Monster high waist articulation, some twist would be nice, but not there. The leg does come out, out again, bend at the knee, twist to the knee. Nothing at the foot. Pretty static at the foot. But with what we get, with the articulation that she does have, and with the base that she comes with, you actually can get A fairly decent kind of action pose out of her. I think it's actually I think there's actually a lot you can do. Particularly if the fact she's on the base and you can really take advantage of her leg articulation. Despite there's not as much as you would get, say, from a massive universe or a DC figure. Not something you get off a of boy's toy, not as much. But for what's there, yeah, yeah, there's quite a bit you can do. Uh, beyond uh, the minicom. She does, of course, come with the Monster High, yeah, that's right, Monster High uh, comb. And I don't know why my camera's been difficult with me. There we go. So if you want to go through and oops, style the hair, brush the hair, 
In this case, it's got the great purple, two-tone purple. Well, see if we can maybe brush it out a bit. On the camera, it looks kind of blue, but it, believe me, it's a really, really nice purple, two-tone purple. Great addition to the Power Ghouls, the Power Ghouls series. And if you're just start, if you are collecting Monster High, if you're thinking about starting to collect Monster High, I'd say that Wonder Wolf and uh, Poulter Ghoul, not bad ones to start off with. You're probably gonna be pretty impressed. If you uh, if you decide to move on to the last three that we're gonna take a look at. Just to warn you, they're definitely harder to get hold of and a bit more pricey. We'll talk about that more when we get to them. For now, appreciate you watching. Rate, comment, subscribe, join the revolution. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.